one kind or another. Yeah. Uh, and the first we're going to read is uh, called Tyrant in the Pillow Chase. And it's, are we going to say like, what it's made of? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So yeah. Tyrant in the Pillow Chase is a collage of three, uh, I guess, three elements of scrutiny. Yeah. Um, yep. the, uh, the musings of Tyra Banks in America's Next Top Model. Um, the uh, observations from the sidelines of Say Shanigan, who's author of the 1000 year old pillow book, a Japanese sort of guide from Court Lady. And the world's scariest police chase is Sheriff John Bunnell. Yeah. <laughs> okay. In spring, it is the dawn that is most beautiful. Before an argument turns into an assault. Before an assault turns into a homicide. I have cut his hair. The school of hard knocks is now in session. As the light creeps over the hills, their outlines are dyed a faint red. I feel her pain, and I love every minute of it. Wisps of purplish cloud trail over them. Criminals who run today are faster than ever. I'm not a cookie cutter. I cut the cookies and I'll cut you. When police find out a person is hiring a hitman, they have to act fast. I only have one photo in my hand. Things that lose by being painted. Pinks. Cherry blossoms, yellow roses. You look like a praying mantis. I think it's fabulous. <laughs> a motorcycle is a beautiful and exciting machine. When the sun has set, one's heart is moved by the sound of the wind and the hum of the insects. The chase is on, and you're riding shotgun. Tomorrow you will meet with the judges. It is simply very cold. Attendants hurry from room to room, stirring up the fires. Your tree will bear fierce fruit. Sit tight. A file of wild geese like specks in the distant sky. Because the problem isn't the chase, it's the crash at the end of the chase. You're like a new colt, ready to run. As noon approaches and the cold wears off, no one bothers to keep the braziers alike. When an officer needs help, a good Samaritan can be the difference between life and death. And she was sent home. Every time I get in a police car, I realize <laughs> the odds are always against the officer. A retainer who doesn't speak ill of his master. If you're a bitch, hide it. One of the last places you'd expect conflict is a cemetery. <laughs> I was rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. And soon, nothing remains but piles of white ashes. Uh, so this next poem we're going to do um, is a mixture of Alain de Botton's popular philosophy and uh, <laughs> the very nice old 1980s um, children's television series, Button Moon, um, which you might have been either too old, too young, or too busy playing to remember. Um, it's called We're Off to De Botton Moon. And there's a countdown. <laughs> so there's a countdown. So there were, on this show there was something which looked a lot like a kind of barely modified baked bean cans, which a kind of series of basically cutlery that was thinly disguised as puppets would kind of wander in and blast off into space. And every time they did, there was a countdown. So halfway through this, if you want to join it, you may. And it goes five, four, three, two, one. Thank you. OK, wait. Hello, Mr. Spoon. Hello, Tina Teaspoon. Mr. Spoon is teaching Tina how to paint her go-kart bright red. He's telling her not to put too much paint onto her paintbrush. Otherwise it will spill onto the grass. And they will always have bright red grass. Handy always to have a shot of perspective. <laughs> Tina Teaspoon has found a ticket to the De Botton Moon Circus. Most of our childhood is stored not in photos, but in certain biscuits. Lights of day, smells, textures of carpet. We tend to imagine that happiness comes in decade-long blocks. Think more in terms of minutes. Let's, Let's begin, begin the, the countdown, countdown together. together. Five, four, three, two, one. Up in blanket sky, the bottom moon has turned pink with yellow spots. From here, nothing matters too much anymore, in a good way. What we understand to be normal is critical in determining our chances of happiness. Look. There's a dresser. It's a kitchen dresser. It's going to the bottom moon. I wonder if Victor Vinegar wants to join in. 
Mr. Spoon can see something pink and purple on the bottom moon. He's going to press the round button so the spaceship lands on the bottom <laughs> moon. Because one of the best protections against disappointment is to have a lot going on. On the bottom moon. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Spoon hears the roar of a wild, woolly asteroid eater. Few of us are great communicators in relationships. We're too ashamed of ourselves to share calmly. What's up? Brew the witch is planning a Demotten moon party. <laughs> and stirs up soup in a great big cauldron. Acquiring enemies may feel like a sign one's life has gone wrong. But it's more likely an indication one's found a few things to believe in. The cloth moon dog scampers round Mrs. Spoon's table. He's a strange little chap with bright blue ears. The only people we think of as normal are those we don't know very well. Vacuum cleaner and small bottle have found a space beat. Can they keep him, Mr. Spoon? A key goal of parenting. To try to ensure a child grows up. With no wish to be famous. Shall we look through the telescope? Yes, let's, let's all look, look through, through the, the telescope. telescope. What a benefit to a relationship not to expect everything from a relationship. Mr. Spoon is telling Tina and Egbert that there is a man in the garden with a white beard. And Egbert is asking if it's Father Christmas. No, says Mr. Spoon, because he has a raincoat on. We should not deduce from this that the condemnation or censure of others is invariably undeserved. Mr. and Mrs. Spoon go for a lovely drive around the De Bottom Moon craters. The best way to make any one particular relationship work is perhaps to get a little less optimistic about relationships in general. Egbert's asking Mr. Spoon if they can use the spaceship to sell the ice creams. What a good idea! It seems that most of us could benefit from a brush with the near-fatal disaster. To help us recognise the important things. That we are too defeated or embittered to recognise. From day to day. Jolly good. <laughs> Monsieur de la has gone back home. And now it's time for Tina Spoon and Mr. Spoon to go back home too. Earthly achievements can no longer be seen as an overture to what one may realise in another world. Let's begin the countdown together. Five, four, three, two, one.